I'd like to introduce Craig McBurney. <clears throat> There's a very interesting project going on that involves skill sets and disabled veterans. Are you there, sir? Hey, Randy, test, test. You're on? Good, good. Good copy? Yeah, good. Yeah. All good. All right. Uh, I've, I've, I've learned a few things today, so I appreciate that. I'm sorry I couldn't join you. I'm, uh, I'm actually, with all this technology, uh, laying in my bed fighting off a little flu. Uh, but uh, hopefully you have on your screen there uh, a shipwreck. Is, do we have a, ship, a shipwreck there? Yeah. 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 All right. A couple, couple, couple of sort of introductions. Uh, thank yous. Uh, we run... We, we buy all your serve. We buy marine surveyor services. And uh, so maybe a little different perspective. Um, and I've sort of got a couple of comments here uh, to throw in in terms of a customer perspective. But I do know uh, Randy wants to move along quickly. And I think we're the last uh, presentation. So we want to go ahead and, and, and knock some things out. Um, we, we run two companies. Uh, Nova Constructors and Veteran Built, which we're, we're a construction company, construction management company. We build stuff uh, primarily in the DC area, although we've worked all over the all over the East Coast. And uh, you know, the other thing that we're doing is uh, the Fun Company, which is uh, Ocean Adventure Travel, and uh, we're bringing uh, for for the first time, sort of in this millennium, if you will, and, and even kind of the last tall ships back to the mid Atlantic, uh, specifically, uh, the newly built, uh, national Harbor, uh, Marina and, uh, the Gaylord hotel. And, uh, that's Milton Peterson's big development. And then we're, uh, the even more recently built what's called DC wharf, which is a rebuild of gangplank Marina. If you've been to Southwest waterfront DC, it's the old fish market. That's the oldest operating continuous operating fish market in America since the 1700s. So for those that don't know the Potomac River, it's, you know, George Washington's place at Mount Vernon and a little bit of a sort of original highway history there. Uh, tall ships, you know, square riggers and fully rigged ships specifically. And then coastal schooners were the ones that sort of got the country built. And um, so we're bringing a big chunk of that history back to the, the DC area, uh, a tall ship to Old Town, a tall ship or two to National Harbor. Uh, and a tall ship to uh, the DC Wharf, which is you know Southwest Waterfront. Um, so those are the two businesses that we run. And then we've kind of the point of the talk, and Randy's giving me an opportunity to to share a little bit about what we're trying to do with veteran suicide prevention in conjunction with those uh, with those with those aforementioned companies I mentioned. Uh, and that you'll see on your screen there a website called VeteranBuilt.co. I think I screwed up maybe and gave Randy the wrong domain in the, uh, in the uh, show bill there. It says .com. It's another a good company, but they're a California company. They're also a construction company, but uh, that, that's, that's not us. So th this is the, the nonprofit site you see in front of you. Um, a couple of thanks in advance uh, to, to the group <laughs> for allowing me to ask you some personal, potentially deeply personal questions here in just a minute. Uh, we can do by hand raise, and I'll sort of have Randy do the count. Uh, this is going to be around suicide prevention stuff. And then a thanks to Randy. So how did we get to Randy? We're in the process of buying these ships. And um, the, the previous gentleman, which has forgotten his name, he, which is a great talk about potentially expanding your practice into sort of inspected vessels. Um, how did I buy Randy's services uh, a couple years ago or so? Uh, well, I started doing research online. And we sort of needed a really high level of surveying expertise. And in, in my business and in any, in any industry, there's people with different levels of skills and experiences and capabilities. And so in doing that research, we, we found a, a, a real genius, really, in, in, in Randy. I mean, someone needs to scrape some DNA off the guy while he's there because I, I, I don't know anyone who's ever been able to sort of just quote Nivix off the top of his head and, and, and have just an encyclopedic knowledge of things. So thanks, thanks to Randy. Many of you probably know him much longer than I do. Um, but uh, that's the thanks. The, the other thanks I was sort of alluding to was 
I wanted to find out how many vets, Randy, are in the group there. Van, Randy, I know you survived Vietnam. How many other vets are in the room there? Um, three. Three? Um, and uh, how many folks in the room, vet or otherwise, uh, have known someone personally uh, who successfully completed a suicide, if you, if you, if you care to answer. Well, I'm pleased to say the answer is none. Okay, good. That's, that's, that's great and that's striking. So today, while we've been talking in this six hours or so seminar, and tomorrow and the day after, uh, 20 veterans are going to take their lives successfully. There'll be uh, roughly twice that that will attempt. Uh, so then it, that's a pretty significant number, and there's a lot of data out there, but it, and there's a lot of ways to interpret that data. But um, it's, it's roughly double the general population, and um, what we're trying to do is do our little part to prevent some of those suicides. And, and without going into uh, – a deep discussion about you know how, how that happens and the efforts that are being made around it um it's it, it's increasing and there are there are causes a lot of causes um but in general the the human condition is such that you know you, you you've, you've by definition lost hope in your future whatever it is you've lost hope and um so we view that with with our direct experience and uh Last time I saw my father, for example, through his from his suicide, I was three years old. So, so we focus our efforts on veterans, who we've used data science and a couple of other, you know, tools and techniques, the Veteran Crisis Line leads and stuff like that, to try to prevent those suicides. And we focus on veterans um, who have children, young children, because of the impact we can't save everyone, right? We can't, so so our focus is is on veterans who are at risk of suicide through our data analysis and some other predictive analysis techniques who, who have children. So were we to be successful in, in preventing that suicide, you know, we have a bigger impact, you know, door, sort of downstream because this, this, these parents, these kids will have parents, et cetera. Um, it, it, it turns out that just the majority of suicides now are veterans over, over 50 actually um, for, for other reasons. But, uh, our, our main strategy and sort of back to those two companies is uh, in our experience is that veterans um, lose hope, ultimately lose hope or, or initially go down that path of losing hope because they don't have a job because they can't earn income because they don't see a future. And so what we work to do with our sale training programs and our maintenance and operating programs is to, um, you know, our, our, we have a team of veterans, and so we kind of we, we hear about cases, and we and we reach out to veterans, and we we, we get them. It's called in our in our world, sort of making the call, right? You you, you reach out, a marine call, whatever it is, and and you and you get this person off the ledge, uh, and uh, and then you find out what's going on in their lives, and you try to you try to get them employed. Uh, you know, there are, I mean, obviously PTSD and a bunch of other things going on, behavior issues, drug, drug addictions, and some other stuff, just whatever it is, you know, it turns out that wiping your buddy's flesh out of the inside of a Humvee leaves some trauma, right? And so you, you got to work through this trauma. We've got a lot of other things going on and there's, I'm going to put a bunch of links up and, and, and make this available in a slide later that it could be, give you some current statistics, but you know, the VA is kind of collapsing, unfortunately, and I didn't know this a couple years ago when I started working on this project uh, that, you know, you have to be eligible for VA services before you can get mental health treatment, right? And, you know, if you have had other than honorable discharge, you're not available, eligible for VA health services, right? So, so there's a whole bunch of issues uh, that, are, that are out there that were to prevent the veteran from even getting mental health services is as we all know if you've ever used or known someone that's tried to access mental health services it's not something that's typically covered you know on your insurance you know here's a the pill might be the the, the doc might be but the doc is part of a big pharma industry and they they're going to give you pills they're not going to give you the therapy you need they're not going to give you the networks and stuff like that and so so we have a construction business we teach trade skills welding bunch of construction management all sorts of things um 
we also sort of provide this 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 camaraderie and and and, and a support group to just keep people from pulling the trigger. Uh, and um, then on the maritime side, which we're just we're passionate ocean people, um, we uh, we we make jobs available specifically now uh, on these tall ships that we have coming to uh, coming to the East Coast. So the tall ship things are fun, um, but I'm going to kind of bring this to a, a relevant. Uh, point that was made earlier, I think by Ken. Uh, no, no, there was the gentleman. Well, I have some stuff from Ken too, but the, the gentleman who was talking about COI inspection. So here's what Randy did right away along the lines of, of, of what uh, the other gentleman, I think Mr. Schwartz was talking about. Okay. Um, he, here's how you might be able to add value. So here's the Tall Ships of America organization, sort of the Association for Tall Ships in North America, sailtraining.org. And they worked with the Coast Guard for a couple of years to develop this rig inspection template. So how many, Randy, how many surveyors in there go up to the masthead to inspect rigs? It's pretty common to, to, for surveyors, that in my experience, and I've been getting boats surveyed for three decades now, that, that you know, your rig inspection's kind of, you know, outside of maybe you have the yard doer, or rigger in the yard doer, whatever it is, but, um, uh, the reason that this template came about with the Coast Guard and uh, Tall Ships America is because of sort of we had a little a little example here. I pull this up. You know, this is a, a gunboat, right? So everyone's heard of gunboats, probably. Uh, lots of carbon, lots of fun. And you know, what might this catamaran that goes thirty knots uh, have in common with? with this 100 passenger COI schooner. Well, what these two boats have in common is a bunch of these catamarans in Hawaii were getting dismasted and killing people. And the, the Coast Guard sort of did a all hands and tried to figure out what was going on. And it turns out no one was really looking at the rigs. And so the, the, the higher level of technical expertise a survey may have is, is who, you know, if you want to be in COIs, that's who, folks like us are going to sort of seek out. Um, and now there's a protocol to inspect all these rigs before. And I just had serve, I had just had uh, coast guard uh, work on an inspection up in Maine for a ship. One of the ships that we're purporting to bring down here. Um, and these guys, these, these, these coast guard inspectors, the older guys, right, they never even heard of the template. There is a template that you can use. Uh, to basically s serve as your uh, rig maintenance log as well and help you get through COIs. And I'm just sort of giving you some real life examples. So not even the Coast Guard is aware uh, of, of this sort of uh, NIVIC 021. And I just want to give you a, uh, you know, a peek, a peek at that. Uh, here it is right here. And, uh, you know, this is the stuff that Randy just quotes off the top of his head when, when I call him. And it's a good segue into what Ken was talking about, about how do you price your services? Uh, so in, in our world, in construction, we, we avoid, like, like the plague, talking about hourly rates or, you know, uh, anything that sort of is, a, is a based on a unit of, uh, a, a, a unit of something, right? We, we, we try to uh, sell our services, whether it's construction management or whatever it is, uh, or building kitchens or additions or whatever it is based on value, right? And so it's incumbent on we, we, your business and my business have very similar things. The yacht surveying business and my business is you can get a twenty thousand dollar kitchen remodel or an eighty thousand dollar kitchen remodel, right? But the the average client in our world only remodels a kitchen maybe once every twenty or thirty years. So they're the only thing they have to compare is the twenty and the eighty, and the twenty looks a lot better than the eighty. And so if I want eighty and profits and stay in business and pay guys and cover workers comp and all the other things instead of being a legal contractor that will take the 20,000 and fail the kitchen, but you got your money, right? I have to convey, cause I'm selling against that $20,000 illegal contractor, right? I have to convey that 60 K difference in, in the terms of value. And so a guy like Randy, when I just, I don't know, you know, the, when I, when you call Randy, he's, I said, Randy, how much to go down to Portsmouth next week and survey 170 foot three masted brigantine uh, uh, or barkentine, excuse me, uh, for uh, it's called, the ship is called uh, it's mystic. And 
bunch of issues with the thing or whatever. And he, he, he just, he, he comes up with a number that conveys, it's a big number, right? I mean, it's, but it's a, but a number has a lot of value because I know what I'm going to get for that. I'm going to maybe not buy. Well, let me just tell you this boat, this is a live deal, right? The, the seller's asking 2 million and, and I'm about at a million. <laughs> so we're a million and apart and we're going to settle somewhere closer to a million probably because I just know. And, and the way I'm going to get, I mean, that's a million dollars, right? There's a million dollar difference between 2 million and 1 million. And the way I'm going to get to one closer to one million than two million and convince the seller is because of services at the level that that a Randy is able to provide. So, I mean, I I already know that, so he, he didn't have to convey that to me. But you could come up with a variety of scenarios where, if you're able to convince your client that the value that you're providing in some way, and it's 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 a, it's a live sales process, right? It's a, the client, every client's different. And someone might not believe you and someone might not care and someone might not be able to afford your, your services or whatever, but that's just, just giving you some feedback on, um, you know, uh, you know, Randy probably needs to charge me a lot more money if he saves me, you know, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the purchase of this vessel. So I'm just, that's not really even an extreme example. I think it's just how I, how I feel about the value of, 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 of a guy at the level or, or, or a woman of a surveyor's level of ex- expertise. Um, so that's a little bit of a, sort of what we're doing. We run some companies to make money and we uh, plug in. I mean, we, we need workforce. So, so these veterans turns out, you know, are a pretty good group of folks to train for these kinds of jobs. And we're talking about two or 300 people over the next 18 months. Um, in the tall ship business, you know, to be able to run these ships and sort of expand our operation and move the boat south in the winter and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to tie in that story really with how we buy our surveying services, and you know, from the uh, kind of from the other, other perspective. Um, the, the suicide is a big thing and I'm just going to kind of run through, um, you know, uh, let's see, let me just check time here. 345, 415. No, I got 15 minutes. Uh, a couple of sites, I'll make these available for those that those are interested, but I gotta I gotta just kind of take this quick opportunity to 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 talk about it. Um, as I click through some of these screens, you're gonna see, and this is all recent stuff. So just recently, post 9-11 vets, um, rates increasing 10%. Um, these these are really interesting, but but current links. Uh, 20 a day. So, so every 65 minutes. Okay. So during the period of me talking or between the period of the last person and me talking, another veteran will put a gun in their mouth and kill themselves. Right. And I'm not trying to leave everyone with a, a, a depressed sort of feeling here, but this, this is a real thing. It's a, it's awareness. It's awareness because now from this talk, you might Here's someone who's struggling, who's a vet from a friend or friend of friend. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to be aware of this website. This is the National Veteran Crisis Line. Some of you may have known this, but this is a thing, right? This is, this is how the, the most important thing you could possibly do. And is my screen coming through? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so veterancrisisline.net, if we can get someone who you hear about is struggling please work to get them to just call this number. That's, that's all you, you, you might save, save a life and you might save a family of 10 year old, nine year old and six year old kids, their father's life or their mother's life. So again, 20 a day. And this is the number that you want to try to refer them to, but just to run through a couple of the relevant statistics here. Um, six of 20 of those deaths were recent VA users of VA hospital services, right? What that says is 14 of today's veteran suicides never even step foot into a VA. Okay. That, that's, that's mind blowing. <laughs> and, and so we, you know, the vast majority of veterans today who are going to die by their own hand will never have even gone to a VA. And so that makes sense to kind of look at why those reasons are. And I'm happy to share them. If, if anybody wants to know, there's a, there's a bunch, right? Access to the VA, other than honorable, you, you don't get in. Well, maybe you punched your second lieutenant in the face and got discharged, other than honorable, right? Maybe you smoked a joint, you know, uh, after you 
uh, cleaned up somebody's brains who you spent two years fighting with and you smoked a joint, you know, and, and you got thrown out other than honorable. So there's all sorts of reasons why you might not even be allowed to go into a VA. And uh, what, what happened is the VAs, the wheels have come off at the VA, you know, literally like recently um, they had a bunch of veteran suicide and issues, but they, they've sort of collapsed with shulking out and uh, all the higher up folks leaving. And I won't go into the whole talk here. I'll have a link. You can, you can kind of review it, but there's a group called Cohen veterans network, for example, you may, and um, what, what they have done is they've created um, uh, Cohen veterans network. Uh, this guy was a hedge fund trader is a hedge fund trader and uh, his son's in the Marines and he came back from Iraq and or Afghanistan and said, Hey, my buddies are shooting themselves and they can't get help. And so his dad put up $200 million and, and they started this veteran Cohen's network. So they've got places all around the country opening up. And if, if you're a veteran or, or a family member of a veteran, you can just walk in and get mental health care for free. No questions asked for you and the whole family. So this is sort of a state of the art thing. That's what's happening. And just, it's just a simple awareness it's kind of like when you're getting ready to buy a car, a certain kind of car, you start seeing that car on the road. At least I do, whatever. You know, now that I'm having this talk with you, you may start hearing about this. If you do, I'm giving you a couple fast resources to try to to, to plug people in real quick. Um, but, uh, you know, again, some of these links I'll make available. Um, there's there's tons of information and data out there. This is a uh, mental health doc. This is a VA's mental health site. Um, the... Uh, CDC has a bunch of resources here, um, you know, what, what goes on. But here's an example. So this is CDC's site on just suicide. Have I depressed anyone yet? Sorry. <laughs> um, these are the reasons, right? And these are the actual, this, this is the data. And with data science, this is how we had to kind of get to solving problems. But, but this data is based on the general population. And so you see there can be a couple of specific reasons. Well, if you look at the life of a typical veteran who's, who's struggling, uh, they've got all this going on maybe, right? They've got every bit of this going on. And, and so you can see why the, 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 we're getting roughly twice the number of suicides in the veteran community as otherwise. Um, but ultimately, like the guys that we know, and there's some girls that we're running into, right? But, uh, you know, the, the, and the rate of suicide increase is actually three and a half times higher for women veterans than it is men in terms of a rate of increase vis-a-vis -vis the general population. But it's literally out, they're out, they can't get a job. You can't get a job for a lot of other behavior or other reasons, but, but they just can't pay their bills. They can't, ultimately that becomes a problem. Their self-worth, their self-esteem and everything else kind of collapses. And so, so if you know someone who's struggling, uh, you know, uh, a veteran, and they can't seem to get it back together, have them give us a call. Maybe, maybe we can hire them. Maybe, you know, they've got some income now and then, but we can start plugging into the, them into these other local resources and, 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 and so give them hope, right? Get to hope. That's why we call the thing, uh, get to hope because, you know, you've got to get back to a place where you're hopeful that you have a future. And we sort of try to focus on some vets. I mean, we'll help anyone who's really on the edge and we kind of know when they're on the edge when we talk to them. Um, but if they've got kids, we really try to focus our hiring efforts around those, those emergencies as well. Uh, so next, I want to share um, this ship. If anyone heard of the Oliver Hazard Perry? Yes. So pretty amazing ship. Um, you can see from the screen here, largest civilian sailing school vessel in the United States. Uh, she's on the hard now. They're getting a new sort of operating plan, business plan in place up in, in Rhode Island. And um, hopefully we were able to become part of that. And, uh, you know, but so, so she has, she has Royals. I mean, she'll have, a, she, she's not flying her, flying the Royals in this picture here, but she's fully rigged and um, obviously takes a bunch of crew. And so, you know, our, our, our goals are to try to, you know, get this ship to do part of its, part of its uh, tours up in DC and then a few other ships that we have coming to DC as well. Um, but I want to share with you quickly, uh, well, this rig protocol, there's a conference coming up um, for tall ships where if you, want to, if you want to get into the rig stuff and you want to start inspecting uh, inspected vessels, uh, you know, you could think about sailing inspected vessels and the, the tall ship conference is coming up in, um, in February on the West Coast. Uh, if you want to go somewhere and get 
and, and get warm. Well, let me see if I have that. Um, uh, Sail Trainings Conference is coming up uh, at the end of February. Let's see if I have it here. I just want to see it. And um, if, you, if you don't go, obviously, you, it, this is a kind of a good organization that you can kind of connect with. Um, and uh, that, that may, there's not a lot of people that know much about rigs, right? The, you know, the, the people that know lots about rigs, especially all the coastal schooners and stuff that are working in New England and Bar Harbor and all those places are, are the captains of these vessels um, who might be, you know, generationally involved with these, with these, with these ships. Uh, the Coast Guard inspectors know very, very little about, you know, rig we found on their inspections, rigs in general. So here's an example where you could sort of pick up another piece of business and, you know, your business is mobile and you get flown around the country. And uh, if you're not afraid of heights <laughs> and uh, it isn't just inspecting the rig, right? It's also using these templates and helping ship owners um, and boat owners develop maintenance programs and, 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 and rig logs and stuff like that. So, you could add these other things. These are just ideas, but these are other things that you could, could sort of as value adds that you may be able to uh, plug into your offering. So uh, let me take a quick look at my notes here and uh, I've covered a bunch of it stuff here, but uh, that's basically it. If someone wants to learn construction or wants to learn uh, how to, how to, you know, run a tall ship, skipper, navigate, you know, weld or whatever, um, you know, think about us. And uh, thanks everybody for the opportunity to present here. I'll take any questions. Any questions, anybody? Okay. All right. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks, Randy. Thank you.